What is it with you? What do you got, a death wish or something? That's what it takes. I just want to race. <laughs> All right, Diesel Heads, it's episode 17 of The Chronicles of Diesel, the only show that's about Vin Diesel's filmography, discography, gameography, his whole life, everything Vin Diesel. My name is Ethan, and with me is Devin. Don't worry, I have a, I have a quote. Ready? Ready? If you're used to living hard, Revis, then dying should come easy. <laughs> Let me guess, it was easy for you to have that quote because it's like the third to last thing he <laughs> said. I also had kid talk to me and just trade one yep. hell for another. I thought yep. that. I, I liked that. That resonated with me. I was like, "You're right." When you're when you have nothing to lose, you have everything to gain. Kind of the same message, but except it's about like no. murder, <laughs> no. murder and dying and <laughs> right out of the fire frying pan and into the freezer is a similar kind of thing. You're just out of one hot water into another. Um, I meant for the <laughs> the no, I meant for the living hard, dying's easy one, not oh. not the. Not the one hell for another. In any case, uh, on today's episode of The Chronicles of Diesel, we're going to be talking about The Chronicles of Riddick, Assault on Dark Athena, the Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, and briefly PC video game. But before we go back in time to 2009, let's go back in time 30 days and talk about (laughs) Vin Diesel's Month of July. All right, welcome to VNN, your only stop you need for all things Vin Diesel in the last 30 days or last month, or yes, last month. In, in our in our current recording, it's 29 days, but that doesn't matter. We're here now. Let's get into it. So usually how we do this is your first ever uh, Chronicles of Diesel slash VNN uh, episode how we do things is we usually look at his Instagram, which is direct from the source. All right, we get directly from Vin himself. We're not going through some weird websites we hear straight from Vin. We will go on those weird websites and those other blasphemy uh, alternative news, but I take it right from Vin most of the time. And sometimes we look at if there's any movies that come out, we look at box office numbers and all that stuff. So I actually want to start with that uh, Fast Nine box office. So I know last episode we were able to see the opening weekend box office numbers. Uh, I wanted to look at what F9 is doing right now with it still being in theaters. I actually uh, looked at the AMC app and saw that F9 is still being advertised on there. So it's still in theaters, maybe not as much as it was before, but it's still in theaters making some dough. Uh, So right now, the domestic uh, amount for F9, which makes up uh, 26% of its total uh, gross is $165 million. Oh, wow. Yeah, and I remember this is COVID. We're still in COVID time. So, like, these numbers might seem a little small, but for COVID numbers, that's really, really good. There's some movies that big. came out yeah. a couple months ago and maybe only got $200 million total worldwide. Right. Uh, so domestic, $165 million. Then international, Four hundred and fifty eight million five hundred sixty one thousand. So that gives you a worldwide total of six hundred and twenty three million dollars. Actually it's gonna be closer to six hundred and twenty four because it's at nine hundred and forty two thousand. Uh, wow. That's pretty good money. That is good money. What's uh, um what did uh F eight make? Let's look. Give me one second. Overall total. Let's see if this one can uh, the Fate it. of the Furious got one billion dollars worldwide okay this has a path to go on it so it's might tough. not one point make sorry 1.2 billion so you're at another it's two not to... it got a, you got to double it you got to double what it's got right now it's probably not going to do that but you know what for covid this is pretty great i mean it, even if it rounds out to uh 700 700 uh million worldwide i mean you're for in covid that's incredible i mean like let's see right. what the box office is well look up black widow too i'm curious all right. On July 9th, Black Widow set a pandemic era box office record with its $80 million debut in North America and earned an additional $78 million overseas. It also pulled in $60 million on Disney Plus. <laughs> and Scarlett Johansson is suing because of that. 
Yeah, that's a whole other story right there. Um, I don't see a budget for F9 that I could find here. But like, let's say it's even 300 mil. You're still making $400 million. Yeah. That's still enough to... I mean, they're going to make another one. But like, that's not a total loss uh, for delaying the movie a year and all that. Um, but yeah, good stuff. Vin getting his paycheck. Everyone getting their paycheck from this film. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's the big thing that's happened right now. We don't have any Vin movies coming out anytime soon that we know of. I wouldn't expect any for the rest of the year. Uh, maybe next, maybe early next year we'll get something. But Avatar Two is um, that's not is coming the up next this. one. No, I was that's next year though. Still, and that could easily be delayed another two years. Potentially, uh, and weirdly enough. It's a segue into his Instagram. I've yet to see anything about like him working on that. And he's usually like at least post something about being, you know, hey, I'm going on set today, or oh, this script is great, something like that. I don't see that unless he's just not in it as much as we think he is. Maybe he has he's a cameo for all we know, and he's keeping it a secret. But isn't he supposed to be in like all of them now? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe he doesn't have a. Maybe he's doing voice acting. Maybe they haven't even know. started filming. <laughs> I don't know. Uh. But going to his Instagram, uh, a couple months ago, we were hoping for a big uh, – I mean, I guess not hoping, but just seeing if uh, he would get a big Instagram follower boost. Uh, a couple months ago, he was bef- – uh, three months ago, he was at 69.4 million. We celebrated that. Uh, now he's at 72.4 million followers. Uh, that's up from almost – 1.1 million Damn. from last month. So he definitely got a boost. F9, F9. boost. People yeah, people looking him up, they're like, oh, who's this Vin Diesel guy? Who's this Vin Diesel guy? Oh, I'm <laughs> going to follow him. Who is this Vin Diesel guy? You know what I mean? So, like, there's that boost. We were expecting a boost. I was hoping for a little bigger. I was hoping for more like 2 mil. But we'll take we'll take 1.1. We'll take 1.1. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we want, I'll I, take One it. of our goals uh, that we've said in past episodes, we want to be here when he hits 100 million followers on Instagram. I think that's totally doable at, at this rate. It's going to be at a couple the, By years. the time the show ends, like this podcast series catches up to the current, and we are just waiting for Vin Diesel stuff, maybe we won't even have this be monthly anymore. By the time we catch up to that, he will guarantee to hit 100 million. Guarantee 100%. it. Hundred percent. Unless, unless, unless he does something. Unless he gets canceled, he gets canceled, <laughs> or like gains some more followers. I don't know. We don't know how the world works. Know. But uh, yeah, seventeen point four million followers. But in terms of the content itself that he's been posting on Instagram, this is a really low month for him. Surprisingly, surprisingly, there uh, usually gets around nine to eleven posts. I would say a month. Mm-hmm. This month, he's only at five. So that Busy. tells me he's working. He's working on something. Whether it's Arc Two, whether it's oh, shit, that's Avatar, right. whether it's Last Witch Hunter, or uh, whatever, maybe another secret pro- his music. We still don't know when he's dropping the album. I think that I think we'll get the album in the in, within this year. I think we're gonna get it around December. That's my that's my hunch. That's my uh, prediction. If not in January, but I think I think we're gonna get some December. I think he's just been too quiet. He's building some. He's making some. If he does an album, we're doing an episode on it. And oh, I ain't yeah. joking. <laughs> yeah. I ain't we're gonna joking. We're track by track, lyric, breakdown, you name yep. it. You name it. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, his five posts um, really aren't too crazy. Uh, he does his normal, like, fan art kind of stuff. He wished, uh, looks like Michelle Rodriguez a birthday, happy birthday. Him next to uh, a Dodge, looks like a Dodge Challenger, and it has a license plate that says Vin on it. And he says, oh, yeah, by the way, they, sorry, I don't know why I'm forgetting. This is a bad reporting. Bad reporting. This is, this is an L for me. This is an L for me. It's, it was his fucking birthday. It was his fucking birthday in July. Do you know what his birthday is? July 18th, 1967. All right, July 18th. Damn. So he wished everybody, he said thank you for all the happy birthdays. I appreciate it. You know, that kind of stuff. Three million people like that post. Three million. Look at that frick, the, the freaking likes. Only a week ago he posted that. Three million. I wish I could just post something at three million likes. My ego would be through the roof. Um, anyways, yeah. One of these posts that I didn't want to talk about is he did this uh, one-minute video uh, with his kid. And he just said uh, how grateful he is that people are seeing the movie in theaters. And he says, you know, he thinks the theater experience is something that we should uh, cherish and appreciate. Especially after COVID and whatnot. 
Uh, he also said he people have been reaching out to him, telling that they saw the movie multiple times, and he says that means a lot to him. He says his kids have seen it multiple times uh, in theaters, Ayo. and they keep reciting lines from the movie to him, and he says it's, it makes him laugh. Uh, and then he said at the end, he's like, all love from the Diesel family. And I'm like, that's cool. I'm glad everyone acknowledges that they're in the Diesel family. Not the uh, the Vin, uh, Mark Sinclair family, the sure. Vin Diesel family. <laughs> sure. But, uh, yeah, he did some posts. Um, he also gave a shout-out to, uh, I, uh, I believe, a Dominican Republic uh, musician who died. He had a video with him that he reposted. Um, give a shout-out to that guy. Um, didn't know his name. My apologies because he didn't say the name. He said it in the video, and I could barely hear it. Um, but, alas... Only five posts. I like I said. I think he's working on some. He's maybe take or, or he's taking a day off, a month off. It's his birthday month. He just put out F nine, doing all that touring and stuff for. I'm sure is taxing. Maybe spend time with the fam because that's what Vin's all about. This is family. So with that, yeah. uh, that is VNN for you. For uh, oh wow, July okay, 2019. <laughs> Jesus, 2021. <laughs> what year am I in? <laughs> All right, well, then now let's hop into our topic of today The Chronicles of Riddick Assault on Dark Athena. Yes, sir. Released, released in 2009 for the Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, and briefly on PC a couple times over this the past. Is, this is when decade. gaming was peaking. Sure. Uh, <laughs> developed by Starbreeze, just like the last one, Escape from Butcher Bay. This game was initially revealed as a, like, facelift remake of butcher bay with a bonus chapter which was going to be called assault on dark athena starbreeze had been working on it publisher uh vivendi universal from the previous uh game getting in bed with activision a bit kind of they're, they're buying merging and, and blah, we, blah, we blah. say fuck activision right now by the way well, we're yes. always fuck activision but topical fuck. as of you know today's recording 100 yeah. percent the um activision blizzard being like no nah, we don't want to publish this game atari steps in and says we'll publish the game so but for a while there starbreeze was working on this game without funding <laughs> they're just going through what they had and hoping that That's they'll get funding yeah game comes out mm-hmm. it is estimated that in the first month the game sold a hundred thousand copies holy shit is that good? Estimated <laughs> total? I don't, I don't know if no. that's good or bad. Wow. <laughs> like, this doesn't sound good. I thought you meant like it, 100, 1 million. And I'm like, no. Nope. 100,000? I don't even think like, like, put in that perspective, I think like, you know, like even popular artists like who put out albums now don't even get like, or get like over 100,000 in, in, a, in a streaming world. You know what I mean? Like physical sure. copies. So like, for, for games, for that era, I'm saying that's real bad. Yeah. It's, well, no. I mean, yes and no. Yes and no. It's disappointing sales for sure. But at the same time, like, a niche JRPG that sells 100,000 copies in its first month, that's a success in Japan. Um, Sony's, as I looked this up like a year ago, back when I was actively pursuing collecting video game stuff. Greatest hits. Remember that on PlayStation? Greatest hits? Yeah. The qualifications were literally just sales if you passed a certain amount of sales. Uh-huh. And on the PlayStation 1, passing 100,000 was it. <laughs> PlayStation 2 was like 150 or something. Really? Okay, like. maybe... Low, 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 low. Low numbers. To be considered, you made it, that's good. Even on PS3, it was less than a million to to be qualified as greatest hits. So, but yeah, this game, overall in total, it's estimated uh, 290,000, I believe, total sales. So it was a flop overall. It was not something to really pursue uh, further, especially considering none of the, you know, a giant publisher didn't even want to do it in the first place. And Atari stepped in the, you know, the burning ashes of what was video games trying to stumble its way through. Although I will say they got a pretty cool logo on uh, modern, in quotes, box arts. Just the Atari, Atari side. Atari to red. me is like one of the most like iconic like logos in general like not even, i mean saying outside video games it's just it's so clean i've always i've always yeah, just dug it three swooping lines leading up kind of looking like an a kind of um but yeah but that that's it for that vin diesel reprised his role um 
the other main character, Rivas. I had the name of the actress, but she's been in TV shows and stuff. She definitely sounded uh, familiar. Michelle Forbes, who I looked up what she had done. She's been in some movies, some, but she's mostly a TV actress. Um, She's been in 24. She's been in Seinfeld. She's been in True Blood. She's been in Chicago Fire, Grey's Anatomy, um, lots of TV shows, but games... This is the list of games she's been in. Okay. Ready. Half-Life 2. That's probably as where Dr. I heard it. Dr. Judith Mossman, who is um, Eli Vance's assistant, and then she betrays him, but then she's also not, or something like that. And then Half-Life 2, Episode 1, and, and Episode 2, she was in all three. I think she the betrayal happens in Episode 2, I think. Um, the, the classic cliffhanger. <laughs> you don't know what happens. Then this game... Then she was in uh, the MMO DC Universe Online as Cerse, which I believe is a Wonder Woman villain. And then this is what's interesting. This is what makes me think that she was sought out for this last video game role. Wolfenstein 2, The New Colossus in 2017 as Zofia Blasovic, which I think, yeah, uh, I think the main character is mom. (laughs) So like sought out. Bethesda must have sought her out for that. But yeah, no, she's been, because like, there, there's boring ass voice acting in this game. Besides Vin Diesel, the, the child's annoying. Everyone sucks. But hearing <laughs> Revis, the the villain character, I'm like, she's actually not bad. No, she was like, cool. I was actually I like, oh yeah, this positives. is good voice acting. This is this is good. So that was her. She was in that. Other than that, just regular um, voice acting actors for other stuff. No one big or anything like that. Um, the game, yes, came out 2009. We played it on PlayStation 3. This is actually the same disc that we played Butcher Bay on the for the remake of that that we did for back in February. <laughs> it was like half a year ago that we played Jesus. the other game. Yeah. Um, yeah, same disc for that. So we played that together. Um, and then due to time constraints, had to watch the last, like, hour of the game in a long play um made me a little queasy man was playing on pc and the I pc port the, i was say the pc port actually didn't look pc bad, port he was playing on Looked was not the original version that was released for mac um digitally only through a random service the version that we saw playing for that thing was released on gog gog.com but was delisted in 2017 so you can't even legally, I don't think, buy this game on PC anymore, which is interesting. Obviously, you can always acquire it through other means if they don't want to sell it to you. And that's that. You can buy it. You don't need to buy it. You can just take it. Mm. Um, or just take it if they want to sell it to you anyway. <laughs> We're not your mom. I bought my <laughs> copy off eBay. Oh, I didn't give my money to Atari or Vin Diesel. Damn shame. But anyway, this game, we could recap it. There's not a whole lot that happens. It takes place like right after Escape from Butcher Bay and ends in a way that was clearly supposed to have a sequel to because there is a gap between this game now and the actual movie that's supposed to take. Pitch Black happens after this movie. <laughs> yeah, it, this is it, this is a I mean, it's the later movies I think that spark this where it's more of a high fantasy science fiction film instead of just a sci-fi a grounded sci-fi horror film, which is what the first uh, Pitch Black movie, Rick, or the, the, yeah, the first Riddick Pitch Black, movie. the first thing with this, yeah, 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 um, yeah. So it, it is. It's weird that like playing this and you're trying to put in perspective of that. It does like even seeing the movies, it feels weird. Uh, in hindsight, being like, man, Pitch feels Black feels like it's a part of a different, different world, different world, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and it's just funny, like, there was clearly supposed to be more story in between this game and the origin, you know, the first original movie, you know, chronologically, but they never got a shot to do it. Maybe one day Vin Diesel will just knock on that door one more time and be like, hey, who has the rights to this, this Starbreeze? Are they still around? Are they still shitty? I think they went under, I think. Um, they were publishing Psychonauts 2 at one point, uh, as well as a walking dead game and i think psychonauts obviously got picked up by microsoft yeah and double fine obviously will always find funding somewhere but i think that walking dead game just disappeared 
So I think Starbreeze might be dead. We talked about this back in February, so go listen to the episode. Nothing's changed since then, I don't think. So whatever I said We're, then, we'll bring, I, had, we'll bring I researched back. it. We'll bring it back. Give us some well, money. Thing. I, Someone I, give I think us a million that, dollars so then we can I buy I think they Star might Bruce. be canceled. Oh, we'll, okay, we'll just buy the name. We'll do what the Telltale thing happened with. Other people came we'll in and acquired the name. put on the E in the breeze. <laughs> Star breeze. Star breeze. Um, <laughs> yes. This game plays identically to Butcher Bay. Probably feels a little better, but we didn't play it back-to-back, so I don't really know. Um, it looks about the same as, like, visually that the remake... So I guess it's not really fair to put it in, but the story felt even not as good because it was just you're on a ship, you get off, and then you get back on again, and then I feel that's like the it. focus, though, at the same time was much more on gameplay this time compared to the first one, in my opinion. Whether or not the gameplay is good, totally different story. But I feel like they, like you said, there's just less dialogue, I felt like, less cutscenes. Yeah. Uh, to be fair, we also killed everybody in butcher bay Mm -hmm. because it led Mm us um but there was also a lot of dialogue between like random npcs or felt random at moments random npcs that can give you things get guns or you can help them whatever uh and this one it didn't there was none of that really besides in the very beginning on that one level there which we'll get to in the jail cell where we were interact doing these like kind of side quests but not really side quests yeah but the other one yeah. in, the, in Butcher Bay, it was like actual like optional things. It was constant. It was like, and throughout the game too, you kept doing that. Yeah. Maybe until like the very end when it was just doing classic video game corridor shooting until you get to the final boss. Because now it's just all the ideas we couldn't do gameplay wise. Now this we're felt more them like a Half right Life now. game, especially in the latter half. Than oh my god! The first game. Like they feel like I they, wouldn't they even like be they surprised. Were, they were all playing Half Life. Yeah, that that kind of happens. You you can almost tell like they started developing that second half around the time that they were finishing Half Life Two, maybe even I don't know. Of course, it doesn't truly line up years wise, but hundred percent. I'm saying it just um, could have been like in the office, like they were like, "Dude, we're yeah. we're gonna make this happen." We need something physics wise, and to do yeah. it with a gun would make sense. Yes, with the the scar gun. Yeah, rem- do you remember when they they finally brought Duke Nukem Forever out of its like hellhole development and playing through that not that i did but playing through that apparently you could see literally see when what what popular shooter was around that year and you can just see it in like the development of the oh, game yeah, of, like, i never this, played it I've oh seen now we've reached the ago, part but... in the game where half-life 2 came out now we reached the part in the game where modern warfare came out now it's just yeah, yeah. so they almost kind of felt someone, like that i like saw this. a let's play of it back in like 2011 or whatever but like i what yeah, a I don't shit remember. show of a game and of course it was gearbox that like oh we're great right we're gonna oh not that that company needs to tarnish its name any further <laughs> um but yes this game plays a little bit better uh focus yeah, more on better. guns than the melee combat but at the same time then they give you the most awesome melee thing ever the ulox just basically instant kill if you get close enough like, yeah. you, you just but it's very easy to get close enough um the stealth felt a little bit better but it It still has the the same same... it's better like the mechanics felt better and less bullshitty because there's a lot of bullshit that happened in the first game where like you're just seen or people just turn around like the word like the ai was just buggy too um and this one it felt yeah a little bit more fine-tuned but at moments it didn't it didn't feel like they were pushing you to do that it just felt like they were pushing you just just shoot them yeah it didn't it's tough for these the layout, types of... Also, the layout didn't feel like you should be sneaking. It really felt like, just just shoot these guys. Didn't feel moving. like it branched as much. It just felt like it was a linear corridor shooter, but you could wait in the shadows. If you wanted to do a knives-only route, you probably could try, right? But Butcher Bay felt like there was some, some way, different approaches you could go about you know, some of the prison politics kind of stuff, and maybe you do all stealthy, maybe just go aggro, etc. This game, yeah, it was really more of just like, this is Half-Life levels, you know what I mean? Just straight through, not levels and legit levels, but like, you know, you could clearly tell this is just one constant progression with different themes of what's going on. Um, But it is tough for these types of immersive sim games to really actually give... You, the player, through, like, gameplay motivations, but also world design, a desire to 
decide that, hey, I might try this differently, or ooh, what if I did this differently, as opposed to a lot of those types of games, whether it be Bioshock or Prey or Thief or Dishonored or whatever, you just like the players and myself, I like doing it this one way. I'm just going to always do this entire game this way. Maybe on another playthrough, I'll try something else. So it is tough for these games in general to be designed well. This isn't a genre that's always hitting the mark on like that gameplay stuff. So when you have a licensed game that's clearly low budget on top of those things, I'm not expecting much. It plays like one of those games that's about it, in my opinion. I don't really feel like I'm being challenged on different approaches. Yeah, there are side quests and again, and then, that we decided not to do. <laughs> yeah, uh, and due to that, it can feel boring at times, or feel, especially for struggling. It can get frustrating real quick because I know we were struggling at that one part where we got this scar and figuring oh out God. how to use it, and just constantly going on this bridge trying to fight this guy. You knew the guy was there, and then like the dude just moves out of the way just in time and i get like yeah. that adds to the challenge but there's a difference between being fun being a fun challenge or being a frustrating and also boring or aggravating challenge uh i'll say this if you've listened to the show before i'm pretty open about my uh i guess my personal issue of video games and difficulties and whatnot i'm someone who likes to have their hand held i don't mind some puzzle solving here and there or some or forcing me to retry a couple of times. But if I can't beat something within like five times, I'll easily get frustrated and it'll, it'll just, I'll get pissed off. And I'm glad that we were able to switch off. Cause like, it's one thing where we can just bullshit on stream and just keep doing it. Keep yeah. talking to chat. That's fine. But I think if we were doing it in the silent or if I was playing by myself, I wouldn't have gotten that far one. I don't think personally. And if I did, I would have, that'd have been a point where I'd be like, I'm turning this off. I'm going to play this next week. If at all, it, again. <laughs> it was a very frustrating experience um, in that sense because we sat down on two occasions to try to beeline through this game. Um, and trying to play a game like this fast can be a little frustrating, especially because, yeah, I don't feel like it's the AI was very good in this game either. It just felt like it was way too dodgy. That scar gun, you know, granted, like, we're mainly talking about the last half of the game now, but that scar gun is a sniper rifle that's unscoped, essentially. Yeah. It's very precise. You have to hit it the, on them because it blows up with the left trigger. It blows up with I don't know how that. much... I mean, I think there was a little and bit. And the radius much, on that explosion is very tiny. You yeah, can't also hit say, a wall I don't know how much them. I didn't notice it too much. Uh, Auto-aim or, like, lock-on, how much there was of that. But, like, for a gun like that, there needed to be some more leeway yeah yeah it didn't yeah, feel yeah. like that it did feel like you said an unscoped sniper rifle <laughs> and yep. it's and, and you're playing on controller you know what i mean so the only time i ever notice the only time i ever noticed any terms of aim assist was this one section on the first time we were playing the like the game two armored walkers and we were just tr- goofing around kind of on stream twitch.tv slash absolutely ethan um trying to climb up and grab a collectible before we get shot or just trying to sneak through i just happened to notice as i strafed around this thing that without touching the camera stick it was staying on him but i had already had it on the giant mech yeah maybe there was some of that going on with the guys but like they just shoot very fast and they dodge a lot and there's those little robots with the the laser oh point, my God. laser pointers, yeah. uh, and laser they sights. hit even harder. They would knock us out in like three seconds. Yeah, and even the regular guns, like at a distance, hard to kill people. Some of the bullet sponges type stuff, especially towards the end when it comes. And those to were halo guns. guns too. Like so, it was all about how much bullets can you just throw in a general yeah. direction. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Shotgun was cool when you reload it because it kind of ejects the magazine forward. I like that. I like. I like video game guns that are oh yeah done well i like i, I like the no, shotgun i mean i could appreciate Didn't feel fun to i shoot, could appreciate but... uh you know the video game reload mechanic or not mechanics but just animations like i've seen you know so many different <laughs> ones whether it's in more of a cartoony kind of game or something more realistic like call of duty like there's i've seen both sides and it could be done and look so good and clean there's moments it didn't have moments that but also at the same time it's this is an older game and can i even call this retro it did have that oh yeah retro, retro feel for sure 
Yeah. My, I, I go by uh, the old rule of 10 years. Yeah. I think, I think that's what they say in, uh, I think it's 10 or 15 years in turn, in term, until something is historical. I think in history terms, like academically, I think it's 10 or 15 years. I don't remember the exact. What does Criterion go by? Oh, wait, but no, they have movies that are like yeah. three years I have, old. I got collection. Parasite on the Criterion Collection, like Parasite Edition, or Parasite's Criterion Collection Edition, and that came out like a year after it was out. So um, That uh, Adam Sandler movie that everyone loves, Click. that's in the collection now. <laughs> yes, that one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Broken Gems or whatever it's called. Uncut Gems. Yeah. Uh, Uncut Gems, that's in it now. I, I yeah, like the I idea was gonna... Click being in the Criterion Collection. <laughs> hey, maybe it is. Maybe it is. <laughs> um all i just saw was like people being like why it already has a five dollar blu-ray and the criterion doesn't add any bonus features or anything besides a couple tiny things and it's expensive the parasite one had has a black and white version like remastered black and white version which i haven't watched yet um and like a of course audio commentaries and like special features so i haven't watched it yet i've been waiting for being in the mood for it since i when i bought it i just saw it so like I didn't, want oh, to, like, you know, I didn't want yeah. to. It is a longer film too. So let's talk about Vin Diesel. <laughs> this, I mean, this game to base down this recap because we do recap on this show. But for these games, sometimes it's tough. Vin Diesel, right at the end of Escape from Butcher Bay, him and Johns has escaped. Johns helps him escape so that Johns also doesn't become a prisoner, and they blow up the the warden or whatever of Butcher Bay. This movie starts with them flying through space. They get taken by the Dark Athena. Johns is put on ice indefinitely. We have no idea how he gets out <laughs> at all. He's supposed to be in pitch black later. Regardless, the Diesel escapes. He's too smart. This is a merc ship, but they're bad mercs because they also just kill people for no reason. Revis is, Revis is the... Whatever. Uh, <laughs> he finds a little girl, and of course, you know, is, is his obsession with little kids in this series or whatever. He's like um, the weird, like, don't become me, but also yeah. I'm going to teach you I'm, things at the same time. Character, yeah. yeah. Oh god. Don't you don't have to. Don't do the things I do, but if you have to, do it exactly like how I do it. Yeah. <laughs> you need to become a monster, but don't. Oh, worst part of the character, in my opinion, is his relationship with underage girls. <laughs> in that sense, um, in that sense, as if any other sense would be different. Um, <laughs> you need you just go through the ship. You kill people. At one point, you find um, a prison uh, collection of different types of prisoners, Jail including cells, the yeah. previous. Yeah, that's the term for it. Uh, but they're all <laughs> different types of people. There's a guy that it literally jerks that there off. Was, there was multiple floors. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Which I thought there was cool. Is... I did like that. That it, like like this ship is huge. There's just rows of them, and they're irreplaceable, or they re- are replaceable. Yeah. Yeah, there's that jerk there, off dude, which like we thought was like, we're like, is he doing what we think he's doing? And then like, I tried to get a good camera angle to see it, and obviously like they're not gonna have an actual dick, but like, yeah, yeah, that voice actor had to do that. Yep, he got there's paid. Doctor Lady, more than we'll ever make in our life. There's previous captain of the ship. There's just a whole bunch of different people, right? And you could do a couple side quests or whatever, and you continue. You kill some important people, and um. Basically, we had I to we had thought... to uh, like talk to every single one of the prisoners, and eventually it, it made us go find this one guy, get his tooth, remember, and bring the oh tooth God, back right? to get a screw, screwdriver from this other person, and that would help him break him out, but also get him the key to where, or no, he needed the vault. That the, was just to make a vent tool. To make a vent <laughs> this tool, That's whole right. thing that gets used, I think maybe four times weird decision so so weird it was a weird like fetch quest but not because the vent tool is in butcher bay but it was something that w- was not optional but like if you got it earlier would have helped john in different pathing and there's secrets here it was just like you needed to use it to go through four mandatory doors or it was it was like that low yeah, of i think number. we used it like maybe like six times throughout the rest yeah, of the game so something After super low and you needed to use them um yeah, it wasn't. Optional. And if there was secrets, then they hit it very well, I guess. But it wasn't. There was no really branching paths in this game. Is my main point. There was no like you could go this way or this way. Butcher Bay did a better job in that sense. Um, but yeah, you keep going. And eventually, I, will say I, I actually f- like that though because there was moments in Butcher Bay where we had nowhere to. We had no idea where to go. 
There was still a moment where we did have to look up where to go because we got lost. That's true. But I appreciate that more of, like, you could try things different ways or you can explore a bit as opposed to, like, this game felt, eh, in that sense. But that's that's just me. Um, Especially because this is what that genre is kind of supposed to be about. You keep going and you, you're just fighting shit or whatever. Getting a mech too um, at one point. I'm exactly yeah, you do where. control. You control some drones. That's that's the main thing too. The mercs don't fight you directly for the most part. Instead, um, they have drones, which are people, kind of like worker drones, that can be activated remotely by jacking into them, um, and you can control them. That's which is like cool. eventually like, you do that too. Uh. When you think about it, like as a concept, this is I do think that's a pretty neat idea. Um neat in the sense of like original, but not neat in like if that this is real. But it's such like a I think about it like if that ha- imagine if that was possible in real life, how quickly our society would at least in America be like, Yep. Hey, don't wanna work anymore? Or there's a there's a pandemic? Send these cadavers that you can control. And we wouldn't even think twice about it. And if anyone did, it'd just be on Twitter. <laughs> I'm going to dress mine up as a normal man, walk up to the bank, and rob it. They won't know it's me. It's a drone. I'm assuming like, you, like they would only be at like your workplace or something. That's what I would imagine. Be like, oh, you're sick today? Well, don't worry. You can still jack into your cadaver body <laughs> at, at your work location, at the factory or whatever. You can still make some cars. But yeah, it's cool, cool idea. Because we've seen, I will give this like series credit. There is some cool like original science fiction shit, yeah. and I think that's what makes good science fiction is when uh, there's something that is far. It feels far enough in the future, but it is possible in our. It feels like you can understand it. Yeah, feel you can understand it, or is something possible in our future? Um, the ability to go into someone else's body but like it wasn't like now straight and it was like there was mechanicalness to it and i thought that was cool and you definitely get stabbed when you jack into it that goes right into your your brain stem like the matrix oof exactly now are these um actual people that got turned into drones or were these made you know what i mean yeah i don't know that's a good question and you know what maybe the sequel that'll never come was about that um because they didn't even leave the ship <laughs> it ends with them going down an elevator after killing the bad guy. But before then, I thought you did kill Revis before you crash or land you beat the Athena. Her up or something. Yeah. Whatever. And that's when they take all your guns away. It's like, ooh. Yeah, and then this... we fought her and we thought it was very anticlimactic. We're like, is this the end? And then it wasn't. It was just part one of yeah. a whole other but section. Granted... But yeah, we fought. Remember we yeah, we didn't have any weapons and we had a fighter with just the um the knives there and the no, remember we used the, the her hair pick because we thought I, well, I thought maybe there was a trophy for it because we're playing we on PlayStation, it. but it also it was a bit poetic because he had uh, he had her her hair thingy. Um, she had like really thick ass dreads <laughs> on her head, um, and we thought stabbing her with the pin that held it together would be poetic. I guess she lived. It was I don't us. remember it that. It was for us. It was emotional. It was for us. We get off the ship and we're going through. It's a ghost town, whatever planet we're on. So the, you meet some people, whatever. It was like Italy or something, right? Wasn't it like called something? New Venice. Venice. I think. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah I'm thinking New Venice. Some Italian sounding place. Yeah, something like but that. But not Italy. Like uh, in know. the United States, or in the United States, Jesus, in Europe, in planet Earth. Mm hmm. Yeah. Different planet. Um. <laughs> Well, this is where it kind of clashes between dark Roman fantasy stuff to real real world uh, Earth science fiction of th- our civilization expanding outward, as opposed to multiple different civilizations yeah. in space. Yeah, this kind of like a comp- like kind of starts to coalesce. You know what I mean? A bit because again, Pitch Black was hard sci fi. Our planet expands our culture into space. Chronicles of Riddick was no. <laughs> There's Opposite. evil dark elf things. Exactly that, right. I guess go around and just destroy shit. <laughs> sure. We are one planet. Literally of the millions. The, literally orcs. <laughs> Is it God? Exactly. Like, space orcs. Uruks. Um, Uruk. Uruks. Uruk. Yeah, exactly. That, that's the term. I'm, well, no, they also called them Uruks too. I think they called themselves. I don't know. Uruk is what I remember in the movie. So. 
Maybe in the books. In any case. Um, Space. Yes. We go through the town and decide to go back. That's what happened. <laughs> he decides he needs to go back. Nothing happened. He just decides he, he needs to, to go, go back. Find, uh, what's her name? Serva, whatever. Who? The bad, the bad, the main bad woman. We we're just talking about. He wanted Revis. to get revenge. Revis, Jesus, Serva, what the fuck? Um, right, but he leaves the ship, and then just goes back in because he realizes I think there's he nothing to, get to, to do. A different part of the. Sh- I don't think he was on the ship. He crash landed on the beach. Yeah, I guess you're right. That was the beginning of the game. It was actually a. The, the rest of the game after that opening cut scene was a precursor to that. And the first game did the same type of thing where it was sewers. a dream. It came from the sewers. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. All right, that's right. But he just gets back on anyway. And then when you get back on the ship, what do you do, Devin? What you normally do, have a boring-ass video game slog through all tough enemies and corridors and puzzles that are too obtuse to make any sense. This is the part that we watched a video of. Thank I God. don't think we could have made through that. Oh, my God. Especially after Watching fighting this that one man, boss, which we had to fight three more times, it looked like. By once you, once you, I got the hang of it, though, so it seemed like it would probably have been easy to continue to do. It's time-consuming and not fun. Kind of. The thing about that boss, so there's a, a boss fight that you fight on uh, New Venice. Big, giant alpha drone. He's got a rocket launcher and a minigun on his shoulder or something like that. He kills you very easily. You have the scar gun as your only weapon. Besides, like, physical stuff. Um, only gun is the scar gun. That thing you can shoot. We tried to knife And then him. detonate him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You can shoot the scar gun, and it leaves a bomb there, and then you right trigger to blow it up. You could have five of them out at a time. Shooting a six erases the first one. The trick to the boss fight, not trick, the way to beat the boss fight is to have five, all five of those shots on the bad guy and then blowing them up at once. No point does it tell you that, and no, it's not going to be like, you need to do this. But at no point does, after all, like, minutes and dozens of minutes of failure, or just standing around doing the same thing, shooting and blowing up, shooting and blowing up, shoot, thinking you're chipping away at his health, does it be like, you should try, why don't you try getting all of them? He doesn't say anything. Bar or something. 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 Some we looked sort that of up, feedback. too, and I was, we're like, oh. We had to Google it. And in fact, the long play we watched later um i didn't i forgot where we stopped so i sent you a link of before that part man spent like 20 minutes on that boss fight i swear to christ not realizing it either because at no point does it tell you how to do that but once you figure it well, out you might have gotten actually to it kind of easy more like be like oh maybe i just need to get as much damage on him as possible immediately and like it's the only way i feel like you would have figured it out more naturally like, we did try that remember we tried we shot him at the ground before because we knew he was gonna pop out of the gate there yes so we've threw a couple on the ground and, like, it didn't do anything. Like, it didn't flinch. But, yeah, there needed to be, like, some sort of hit markers or, like, some sort of sound Something. effects to, like, indicate or just that he was hurt. After, after a bunch of essentially not doing that, Vin Diesel being like, maybe I should get all five of them on them. Maybe maybe a whole bunch I need more once. firepower or something. Maybe one, maybe one shot's not enough. Maybe I'll, I need all of them. Something. Something. To get him to think, because before that fight, we'll need goes, a this will be a to challenge. Take out someone, something, something this big, yeah, something. In any case, you, you, they, then that just becomes like a regular enemy they decide to throw at you, and it's boring. Eventually, you fight a big boy in a tank that's like second in command. Reeves is second in command. Spinner is his name. Um, that fight actually is a lot easier than the um, Alpha Drone fight. Apparently, that one actually is just do damage till he dies, and then you keep going and you fight Reeves. And there's a trick to her as well. She's also invincible. The trick to her is getting her to fall down the elevator shaft. In watching that long play, like as soon as they figured it out, I was like, at oh. one point they got stuck in a corner and he just let himself die because he was like, I can't get a. So yeah, that's such a weird. I like that idea, but I feel like it had to be like just you executed. can't make her invincible. Yeah, because he at that point too, he also has you also have weapons, actually like actual guns, like yeah. You can't make. She has no helmet on. You know what I mean. You yeah, gotta make. Needed, come on. She should have been in a mech or something too, or something, something different to like. Also, that was pretty like anticlimactic, considering we fought her once before and you beat her with the hairpin. Yeah, and then here you're shooting her with explosive guns At and point blank regular range. bullets, and she doesn't. Yeah, yeah, and you can tell too. This this is not relevant to anyone because we're talking about a YouTube video we watched. 
you, both times you could tell when after he died, he looked it up and immediately knew what to do for that fight and the Alpha Drone fight. Um, because he immediately went for the thing. But uh, yeah, very anticlimactic. That's where you get the line uh, you said at the beginning of the episode. Um, if you live, live a hard life, dying should come easy. Of course, he says that after she falls. So it's not like he's he's only saying it falls, to make drops, himself gets drops. drops. <laughs> like it's yeah. Um, she says, "Remember me," or something. I would have oh, honestly I don't tried know why to she yank said him that down too. Remember me, like why? Not like not like you guys were like ex lovers or something, and like you had a fall. It's not out. like he respected you either, or you. You know what I mean? You didn't have that that antagonistic. You know, you, like, you know how that is she, in storytelling. She, captured him like why would she tell him to mem- i don't know yeah. whatever weird line weird line executed oh, well and weird line and then the little kid um I think this little child has been throughout the thing seems to be special but not really i don't mom know died in front of her yeah definitely some yeah. drama there for the future yeah yeah she could she knows how to jack into the alpha drones or whatever and um that's cool uh and then vin diesel and her go down an elevator and that's it oh and then vin diesel says when i say goodbye it's for forever you ruined my idea when this episode ends i was gonna say that but i'll say I'll, I'll cut it out i'll cut it out do it anyway it's too late any case um <laughs> so that's like that's the story of the game it's very gameplay focused like, not yeah, a like lot of story said, focused yeah there's less stuff to really cover um, it happens now that you said it like that, what you took? What it took you ten minutes to kind of just recap that? That's really you all know, that happens. I didn't realize the Wikipedia page sums this up in two paragraphs Jeez. under plot. I never read it because I obviously didn't want to know. You know what I mean? <laughs> I didn't want to have it be spoiled to me. But yeah, it is literally even like like the last paragraph is almost like just the final scene because <laughs> it's that's where the lines when he says it to people. That's it. Yeah. Right. Not a whole lot going on, but I mean. I, that's and that's my question. Should there be a lot going on? This is supposed to be a part of you know a story. It ended abruptly. It felt like they were like, "This is what we got." Yep. Game over. Sequel tease or just budget ended. Deadlines now <laughs> done. No one's actually going to finish this game, so let's end it here. Yeah, we don't even finish this game. We end it here. <laughs> um, that was a good boss fight, right? No, but whatever. I mean. At the end of the day, the game, just like Butcher Bay, has all of the elements of what could be a good 0451 or immersive sim shooter game. You know, the kinds of games I had mentioned earlier with Bioshock, System Shock, Thief, etc., Prey, P-R-E-Y, not A-Y. Although maybe they'll make a sequel called P-R-A-Y, you know? Uh, Prey ends with the sequel tease. It actually seems like it'd be fucking awesome, and I don't think they'll ever make that game now that Bethesda bought them because it didn't sell very well. All the nuggets are there, and I think it's it's okay for 2004 original Xbox. It's it's probably pretty decent. People remember that game fondly as a good original Xbox game. That's great. I'm glad it exists. Honestly, if I probably had it, I probably would actually have liked it. I might have been confused, might have been frustrated, but I feel like there's good shit there. For a 2009 sequel on the HD consoles, and after we've gotten Half-Life 2, (laughs) which is another one of these kinds of games that was revolutionary, and just, like, historic in that sense. Bioshock. It's, it's, oh, Bioshock, yeah, that came out two years prior, that was the game <laughs> you know what i mean that for all intents and purposes that was the game you respected was bioshock yeah hindsight so you, maybe less so better but versions then, of this at this point and it needed existed. to at least maybe not be at that level but like do something different to an extent or feel we've also fresh. gotten the the novelty of having a uh hollywood actor in a video game, therefore, the acting's going to be good. That novelty's gone because you got great acting in games. You know what I mean? We've already had Uncharted. We've already had, you know, games with good stories and good acting, whether they be a Hollywood actor or not. You're right. It's not 2004 where, like, that's starting to become a thing. Or much. that's like, wow, that's cool. You know, it's more than just Metal Gear Solid with these rare instances. Like, we're starting to get there now, you know? 
yeah, so it feels its impact is far less. And because it also has less going on besides it deciding it wanted to have its own type of half-life gun, you know, besides that, it feels like there's less, this is a lesser game. Now granted, I guess, like I said, initially the idea was that this was a bonus chapter. This ended up becoming a full game that just happened to include the remaster. And also moments felt unfinished, especially the ending. Yes. So it's tough. Personally, can we talk about? Oh, I was gonna say, go ahead, but we need to talk about the multiplayer too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, we did play that. We played every mode. <laughs> um, but yeah, personally, I feel like this game was a letdown in the sense of coming from Butcher Bay, expecting more great. Mechanically, it improved minorly, but overall, as an overall experience, no. They, yeah, they, they learned some things, but almost not enough yeah. either. Uh, yeah, let's talk about the multiplayer now. Yeah. We played this game multiplayer on a PlayStation 3. Uh-huh. We found someone on... Uh, I, I I am a trophy hunter on PlayStation. I stream that sometimes. Um, and I use the website psnprofiles.com. Tracks Hashtag shit. Ad. It's awesome. Hashtag ad, yes. Uh, I love that site. Um, it's one I go to every day for the most part to look at shit. Really nice site, tracks all your shit, displays things nice, tracks stats and all this stuff. Also, you can set up uh, boosting sessions, cooperative sessions, multiplayer fun sessions. I set one up for this game a, like a few days prior to the second time we went to sit down and play it. And I got someone to play it with us. So shout out to um, the Australianite Bale underscore Fire <laughs> on PlayStation <laughs> Network, who owned the game and never touched it and was down to play multiplayer with us yeah real 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 g out, out across the pond no not across the pond across the planet my bad yeah now, granted time the time we had set 7 p.m eastern time worked out for him because he got to wake up and just play so it wasn't in the middle of the night <laughs> imagine like if he might have been waking up at <laughs> imagine anybody just waking up wasn't it a monday too Gotta think about that. It was a month. It was a middle of a, the start of a work. Well, I guess week. it would have been Tuesday for him. Still okay. Middle of the work week. You're like, yeah, I got nothing else going on. That Maybe dude has got to be didn't rich have a job. Or, or didn't have a job. You know what? Bless him. Or Bless a child. Him. Um, but like, just think about it too. Bless on him, that site, sure. a lot of people selfishly are in it to make the trophies for themselves. This dude had no intention on the trophies. By the way, the trophy list for this game sucks. Win. A thousand matches to kill ten thousand people. No one's playing your multiplayer that much. In any case, this guy joined up. So shout outs to him because I was not expecting us to find anyone at all. But we found someone, so we were able to play the multiplayer. Random, just a random dude on the internet just happened to go on the yeah. forum. Also, that's another thing. Like, how many people use that website? How many actually go on the forums? How many people set up play sessions? And how many people own this game? You said at least a hundred thousand. Like at the least. chances of actually finding people was pretty yeah. slim so sh- yeah really yeah. shot that person so we I, yeah, could at I mean, least like, try it to the best we could i wish we could have i wish we could have seen this game in its prime like like the first week it came out because i would love to see that multiplayer i'm i love my uh shooters multiplayer shooters so i would have loved to have seen that in its full form because it definitely had halo mixed with uh half-life vibes quake even Quake. The level design um, felt like looked like Quake for sure, or yeah. at least uh, just arena shit. Arena shit, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so there's a variety of modes. There's a regular deathmatch mode and a team deathmatch mode. My fa- personal there, favorite, capture the flag. There is a capture the flag, which I realized I didn't understand how, the capture, how the capture the flag works. works. <laughs> yeah, yeah a, but, but I mean, when it's games, two yeah. people, when it's one on one, capture the flag kind of doesn't make any sense. It but doesn't. we tried it anyway. Um, it was okay. Then there was uh, Arena, which is essentially close quarters Quake, which was very fun. And apparently that's the trick to boosting those 10,000 kills, 1,000 wins is just there. Um, also, Rare, this game lets you play LAN on, on console. Well, lets you play LAN on PlayStation. Xbox, bit more of a thing. But on PlayStation, that was an option. And I'm trying to think, Devin, I own two PS3s. If I buy a second copy of the game, those trophies are as good as mine. Will I? No. Because I think I spent like $35 on this game on eBay. I ain't doing that again for this Platinum. But it would be my rarest ever. 
at less than one percent. Not worth it on the hardcore pl- trophy hunting website. You're gonna be you're gonna be in hospice. You'll be in the hospice lying down, and you'll be like, why did I waste my time playing that game? The reason why I won't is because I'd have to play the, the actual single player, both of those games, on the hard difficulty and collect everything, and I'm like, eh, I don't think I want to. Wheelman I've been actually working on for the Platinum. I will Platinum Wheelman. It's actually not that bad. But, uh, yeah, we played all those, but the one mode that we did find interesting that would have been a lot more fun in uh, more than two players is a mode called Pitch Black. Where it is essentially kind of like a zombie type of thing. There's a game that I think used to be out around this time or a couple years later was called, I believe it was Stalker, I believe it was called. Um, Where it was that, like, there was a dude who's invisible or concealed in darkness of some sort. And then there's other people who are, like, soldiers. How it worked was whoever killed them usually became it. Uh, Yeah. Or something like that. So this is similar. Um, But this one has an announcer that says, You are Riddick! (laughs) <laughs> which is really funny yeah um, well, she said you're vin diesel that would have been oh even better God. yeah one player is riddick everyone else is soldiers soldiers are on top of a collapsed building riddick is is lurking in the shadows of the building itself down underneath riddick by the way in the gameplay both single player and multiplayer well i guess only in the pitch black mode because it's the only point that has riddick in it otherwise you're just goons which is kind of funny to think about um you can press up on the D-pad to activate your eye shine, and you can see in the dark. Cool. Which is a mechanic in the game that's used often. Soldiers don't have that. They land on a roof. There's all the guns there. They can just pick up their guns. The guns have flashlights on them. They descend down into the dark building, which they need the flashlights to see. And Riddick is trying to kill them all by hiding. He can see in the dark, and all he has is his insta-kill knives or whatever. Sneaks up on you, tries to kill you. That's it. If any of the soldiers can kill Riddick, they become Riddick for the next round. It's pretty fun. And I can see it would have been a lot more fun with people or something. Yeah. Like, we're. Because then I'm assuming it's a point system, is like you're. You have to work together, but also you don't want someone else to get Riddick. So I'm sure there's like that kind of competitive uh, drama there. You want to be the one that gets him, for sure. You also need to help your other other people so you can become Riddick. You have to kind of. Man- exactly. manage that and i think that's cool i like i like game modes like that where like you have to constantly flip on what side you're on and manage all that yeah, yeah, yeah i always yeah, thought yeah. that's cool like, i like that in like these competitive cooperative there's games um, like that in uh or like in gary like a lot of old gary's mod modes were like that that's what i've always liked about those is that or even like games that aren't necessarily uh a versus thing like the multiplayer mario games you're all working towards the same goal, but you're being scored at the end, and you're kind of in each other's way. So you're you're still trying to like work towards a goal, but you're trying yeah. to make sure you're number one. You yeah. know, um, so yeah, I, I enjoyed, especially since all the other game modes are shit in Halo, and even Call of Duty Modern Warfare. But this one felt unique to the game, and it made a bit of sense. Yeah. You know, it was cool. It felt like this could have been from a movie, like the movie Pitch Black. All these soldiers descend to this building that Vin, that Vin Diesel Riddick is stuck in. I thought it was funny, though, that I, I still think they should have gave you a flashlight to start with. Because I thought it was funny when we first did it, we couldn't see anything. We're like, what are we supposed to do? We can't see anything. Because we didn't we no pick up any of the guns that had... Yeah, <laughs> well, that, that, was should, done. that should have been one thing that you should just start with. You should just have And in order to give up, we had to fire the gun a bunch to let Bale fire the other player find us. Yeah, so that he could kill us. Yeah, a little, a little woof. But at the same time, you know what? Game's dead. <laughs> you could say that about that game. Game's dead. This was of the era too. As where... as the servers were up, that's even more shocking. I to me. think it's. I think it might be peer to peer. That doesn't make sense for this. It must be a part of some technology that is just up for other reasons, and it gets to piggyback off of it. But I, I mean, I like, it is no, I like land. the idea. There's like one computer left out there and some dude's running attic it. it's running and it's just keeping these in case people like us do a podcast about the chronicles I, of riddick i'm not going to open the game back up probably ever but to look at the wordage i think i think it was saying you created the servers or find the servers either that or it said create room there's create a lobby which is different yeah lobby did it say lobby I don't know. Lobby party because maybe your PlayStation or Xbox 360 was emitting a server I don't know. Um, because, like, there are games of that era on 360 and Would PS3. Would that have been a thing as back then, though, as much? Because of, like, internet 
capabilities. I get, or I'm saying like, because it's like I back then I felt like it wasn't easy to host servers all the time because you're relying on one person's internet connection then, and if that person's internet connection is shit, then there were, everyone else struggles. Yeah, there were definitely um, fighting games, one-on-one games of that time that are peer-to-peer. Like Street Fighter Four is one. If you boot it up on 360 or PS3, like there's no servers for it. It's direct your console to their console. So maybe something like that happens. I, there is some sort of technology I like really that tough I know like this game runs on. How many players I would assume would have been playing at that time? So yeah, that'd be interesting to look up. But there, there's something. I I saw it briefly on PSN profiles. Like oh, servers are still up. It's a part of some technology. That's why. Or I saw something like that. So I maybe I I'll look shine it up one technology. Day exactly but yeah we did the multiplayer um this was of the era where triple a games or western games let me put it this way western console games on the hd consoles felt that they needed to include a multiplayer mode to help prevent players from selling their copies to stores so that then people buying their game would buy brand new copies and less used copies. Therefore, they make the money. Do you follow with that? Yeah. Basically, yeah. A reason to keep people from selling their games so there are less used copies to buy. So people buying the games buy the new copies. Because if you buy a used game from GameStop, uh, I almost said Activision Blizzard wouldn't make any, any of that money, but we don't care about them right now. Nintendo wouldn't get any of that money. You know what I mean? GameStop gets all of the money from a used game. So EA... 2K, Activision hated that idea so much. Bioshock 2 was a multiplayer mode. You know, all these things like that, they're like, it's shoehorned in just to hope people don't sell the game because they finished it. You know what I mean? Uncharted 2 has a multiplayer mode because of that reason. Now, granted, they pulled it off and it was very fun to play. I remember playing it a lot. It was great. So it was shocking. But that was there So because... You can beat that game in eight hours or something, and it's like a movie game. You're done. <laughs> you put it out. You sell it. Yeah. You know what I mean? They don't want people to do that, right? So this was definitely because of that. And, like, do I think it needed it? No. Would I rather have a better ending to the game <laughs> if it, the time could be spent there? I'm not saying that's exactly how it works in game development. That's what I guess I would have preferred. But at the same time, don't think it's bad that it exists. Just as a baseline, it's cool. More. I just things. would have loved to have seen it in its prime, its heyday. I think that'd have just been cool to see. There's something, uh, like there's so many games now that have, uh, there's so many games now that have multiplayer. You know, even game like, not because of the reasons you said, but just nowadays, I feel like that's just the thing to do. Is some games have gotten rid of single player parts of their games and just focus on multiplayer now, and I feel like that's such a thing now especially with covid and everything people are just playing uh, one way yeah. they can hang out with their friends safely now is just playing online games yeah. um that like there's we don't have it's not this it's not the same as it was back then like i remember playing world at war on my ps3 and like it was just a, this is a different vibe back then compared to now when i'm playing cs or whatever it is yeah uh, well now we're in the era of uh, you playing a game is content, <laughs> you know what I mean? Which is also advertising. It's all this yeah. live service I mean, ecosystem. I mean more just like how I feel like it's easier now to find games that are multiplayer and like accessible, or at least that's their focus and they're decent. Like most, I feel like most games that multiplayer have at least something to them most of the time. When like back then, yeah, or back or back then, it's just like you know everyone was playing the game and you had to kind of find those people or. You know, and I just found I just find it interesting that like that time period back when there was no crossplay either. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, like, it, this to me just had Halo vibes, and I never really played Halo. But when I did play it at my cousin's house, that's most of the time we would do is just we'd hand off the controller in multiplayer mode, and like it just it, it reminded me of that when we were doing it. it reminded me of those days, and I mm. I kind of appreciate mm. it for that in terms yeah. of its vintageness. Quaint. Very quaint, but yeah, that's the game. Uh, I enjoyed the time we spent together playing it. I don't know if I necessarily would have enjoyed. Like I told you, I would have if I had bought this own. game even back then. Uh, and assuming I haven't tried the multiplayer, I probably would have quit halfway through. This game screams rental. <laughs> yeah, but also, I would have been more interested in the multiplayer. I think if I tried so, that 
first. We need to it. we need to think about this again too. When we did Butcher Bay, we played the remake port that is a part of this game. But we didn't talk about that because we're kind of really talking about the 2004 Xbox game that we would have tried to get, but we need an Xbox, et cetera, et cetera. Wasn't working out. We right. need to yeah. actually take into consideration that this game always has a remake of its predecessor. And how unique that idea is. Like an HD upgrade before that was a thing, really, is with this game. Like, so, like when we're talking about the game, we have to, like when we go to rank it, we need to also consider, like, take into consideration, has the first game included? Like, with a facelift. You know what I mean? So I think that that is, like, an interesting thing. Like, it's a, it's a compelling package because that is almost, like, reason enough to keep the game a little bit longer before you sell it. Because it has the first thing. I was going to say this game screams rental, but it's got two games in it. <laughs> you know what I mean? And a multiplayer mode. This it's is something maybe you got pre-owned at GameStop, though. For sure. Like... Or if I wouldn't on, have paid full price. No, I'm saying like that's what I'm saying. Pre-owned for sure. Uh, maybe near Christmas time, you got you got some Christmas money, and they're like, "Oh, he looks cool." Maybe he's holding knives on the cover. And if you're yeah. like 15, maybe <laughs> you know, yeah, exactly. Maybe I don't you think just got that's... your first job. You're like, "Oh yeah, dude, I, I, I dude, I watched Riddick, dude. I got Blockbuster, dude. I'm gonna fucking play this shit, bro." This is a game I would get. I think you. I don't. I don't get stoned, but I think I. If I was in that, you wouldn't have fun because the game would just be harder. But, but you know what I mean. I just I feel like, like you it's wouldn't one enjoy of those it. games that like you just probably smoked weed too. Probably the hundred thousand people. I can guarantee you thirty percent of them smoked weed to it. <laughs> but but uh, yeah, this was a two thousand nine s game. Let's rank it in the context of twenty twenty one. We have uh, two rankings on the Chronicles of Diesel. We have the quote unquote movie ranking which is just the product ranking but i don't like yeah, saying we, product yeah. or consumable so movie Content is probably ranking. the best way yeah i hate i hate that the art ranking maybe we'll call it that art ranking but that sounds pretentious <laughs> movie ranking this yeah. is on the movie rank because 98 of this shit's movies. media ranking i guess is yeah, the yeah. best way to describe it close but we're we might, rank who knows, we might do books one day i don't fucking know. we rank the overall thing as a whole and then the sinking, set the sinking. The second ranking is simply Vin Diesel's performance in it. The Vin so, ranking, yeah, exactly. Now, not not saying that the overall ranking is devoid of Vin Diesel because if he makes it, it makes it. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, we definitely have had ranked movies where we felt he did such a great job, along with everyone else in it. That's why it's in our top five or whatever. Exactly. Exactly. So uh, to reiterate to folks uh, that have tuned in every single month, appreciate you, um, to the Chronicles of Diesel, this is our overall movie ranking list as of 2009, because the next one is not until 2011. We're skipping 2010. He doesn't have a thing in 2010. Took a year off. Number one. Exactly. You've been grinding so long. You've been grinding so long. You deserve a year off. We all deserve a year off. You know what I mean? So at first, at number one, we have Saving Private Ryan. Number two, Triple X. Number three, The Fast and the Furious. Number four, The Iron Giant. Number five, Awakenings. Six, Fast and Furious. Seven, A Man Apart. Eight, Find Me Guilty. Nine, Boiler Room. Ten, The Chronicles of Riddick. Eleven, Pitch Black. Twelve, The Fast and the Furious, Tokyo Drift. Thirteen, Knockaround Guys. 14, Wheelman, last week's or last month's episode. 15, The Pacifier. 16, Babylon AD. 17, Los Bandoleros. 18, The Chronicles of Riddick, Escape from Butcher Bay, the original game. 19, Multifacial. 20, The Chronicles of Riddick, Dark Fury, the animated thing. And 21, Strays. Personally... I think, because we're, we're talking about video games here, I don't like this as much as I like Wheelman still. Do you agree with that sentiment? To me, I, even before we played these games, well, I, I would say after we played Butcher Bay, and I was like, okay, I'm guessing Dark Athena is going to be in the same mold. And then, then in between that, we played Wheelman. Wheelman is just so much of a just goofier, fun, just interesting game. It's just a forgotten gem, I would say. It's not a great game, but it was fun. Definitely a game I would just 
tell people to like look up and it's it's a triv it's a game like I said it should be in, like in trivia or something it should be not forgotten. This yeah. game this... could be forgotten, and that's okay. Yeah, it mostly has. <laughs> it mostly has. But I'm saying too. like if the world's ending and like we're trying to like put something in some sort of uh undest- indestructible memory pod and we only could put so many games in i would not put this game in there <laughs> really <Okay>. quickly <laughs> wheel man know. maybe maybe wheel man i'd think about it cuz it's just such a weird human creation so then this has to exist cuz i also think that this is a little bit better than escape from butcher bay simply because it is a better more fuller package that also includes butcher bay um as well as and a we you know it's got decent things going on i feel like overall the entire package minor improvements exactly minor improvements. plus the original and a multiplayer that's like decent i feel like this is in between wheelman and escape from butcher bay so in between those two is the pacifier <laughs> babylon day babylon ad babylon ad and los bandoleros it's in between those I two. I honestly think it's right above Escape from Butcher Bay. Or above I was going to go there, too. But Los Pandeleros no. was like, even though it's short and was definitely more of an artistic vision, I still probably would... I hate doing this, but like watch that before ever thinking about this game. Or I'd think about that before I think about this. I'll even make it that more black and white. Uh, yeah, I, I just feel like that's... For what it was trying to do, it does it better. Yeah. yeah. You know? I think I agree. There we have it. <laughs> the new home <laughs> of uh, right Assault above. on Dark Athena is right above Escape from Butcher Bay. Um, but yes, basically, Wheelman 14, The Pacifier 15, Babylon AD 16, Los Bandoleros 17, Assault on Dark Athena 18, Escape from Butcher Bay 19, Multifacial, Dark Fury, and Strays round out the bottom uh, what is that? Damn, we're almost to 25. Eight. I just realized. Damn. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This was our 22nd thing on this list. Now, Vin Diesel, let's talk about his performance in this video game. I feel like he is just about the same as Escape from Butcher Bay, but with less lines. Less lines execute a little better. A little better. I'm not going to give him, like, a round of applause, but a little better. I did, like, hit, like the last couple lines that were memorable because I think he executed those well. But there was also a couple lines where we were like, he did that in one take. No for one sure. said anything. But there was a lot more of those in uh, Butcher Bay, for sure. Butcher Bay was probably... Well, we have it on our... We'll go through the list in a second, but it's our second to last. And the only reason it sh- it's not last is because in Awakenings, he's in it for one frame, and it's hard to even, like... You can't you can't grade yeah. that. So, like, it's just going to be <laughs> yeah, last. Yeah, yeah. But if, if, if awakening, if we took awakenings from off that list, it's a it's a low, very, 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 very low in last twenty. Mm-hmm. So yeah, uh, now it's better than is that this for better sure. than Wheelman? I, don't, I, I want to say no, no. <laughs> uh, I, you know what though, Wheelman was tr- like that whole thing was trash and he wasn't doing, it wasn't blowing us away. And he kind of was just, he had a lot more lines and he wasn't doing that good in those lines. He had Thinking very limited lines now. In this. Hmm. We should, let's list them all off first for the audience. I should, I should do that actually. Yes. Right, this is our Vin Diesel one performance above it that ranking is important. That can kind of help us too. Yeah. Um, well, I don't think it's going above that one. No, but I think this it's is our talk about. this is our Vin Diesel performance ranking. This is all about Vin Diesel in these movies. Number one, Triple X. Number two, The Fast and the Furious. Number three, Fast and Furious. Number four, Find Me Guilty. Number five, A Man Apart. Six, The Pacifier. Seven, The Chronicles of Riddick. Eight, Babylon A.D. Nine, Los Bandoleros. Ten, Boiler Room. Eleven, Multifacial. 12, Pitch Black, 13, Knock Around Guys, 14, Strays, 15, The Chronicles of Riddick, Dark Fury, 16, The Iron Giant, 17, Saving Private Ryan, 18, The Fast and the Furious Tokyo Drift, 19, Wheelman, 20, The Chronicles of Riddick, Escape from Butcher Bay, and 21, Awakenings. 
So our bottom three are the two video games and a <laughs> scene <laughs> not that even. he did not speak not in. <laughs> he was an extra a frame, <laughs> literally yeah. a frame. Um, um, yeah, I want to make you. You're reminding me a bit more. My most of my memories of Wheelman are simply the gameplay, and he doesn't talk during the gameplay. He talks during cutscenes in that game. And in the cutscenes are, and they're not great. And that, not just him. Everyone's bad in that. I think. Yeah, it's pretty and pretty bad. And and the reason I wanted to also bring this up, the one above it, which is the Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift. I know what you're thinking. Why would I bring this up? Well, the reason is because he's in it for such a small amount of time, but he does really well in it. But the reason we rate it so low is because he's only he only has the two lines there. Mm-hmm. In this game, he doesn't have many lines. How do we feel he executed on those lines overall? Mm, that is compared to Wheelman, where he had a lot more lines for sure, compared to this game, and how did he You're execute s- those? So that, that's what I'm saying. This is this is going to my. This is how I usually break this stuff down. Once we're getting in the weeds a little bit, the easiest way to break it mm-hmm. down for me is quantity and quality. Sure. We have, remember we had a uh, knock around guys. We had that up pretty high at one point. Or not knock around guys. Um. Boiler room. Boiler room. We had that up. That was our number one at one point. Yeah. Now it's ten. But the reason we had it up so high was because in that <laughs> one scene, he killed it. And we were and at that yeah. point, up until that point, we were blown away. We're like, who's yeah, this yeah. guy? Who is this guy yeah. doing this? Who's that man? Who's that man? Yeah, yeah. So I feel like we're that's kind of where we're at right now with this, where it's like, or at least for me, where it's like, how many lines did he have? So how many in terms of and what what did he have to work with? And how did he execute those? There was a couple, like I said, that were like, man, he did that in one take, and someone should have told him, hey, can you redo that one? Or put a little, enunciate a little better, or bring more emotion to this one, or say something, say this differently. And there's other times where, like, the last couple lines in the game I thought were cool and cheesy, but, like, it fit what the, the game was or what this character is. And he executed those well for that character. When Wheelman... Okay. I, I don't know. What is his character? I don't remember his <laughs> He's character. supposed to be an undercover cop person. Which we didn't realize. Which we didn't realize, which I think has to go part of it either to the writing and him acting, voice acting. Uh, so that's yeah. why I think it's above Wheel of Man, only because he doesn't have as many that's lines. Fair. That's fair. That's and you fair. think that there's a thin line between having so many lines that you have chances of you messing up a line or it being bad at parts increases, of course. But if anything, that deserves more respect, though, if you are you have more lines and you kill it, which we saw in Triple X. I think at Triple X is we saw Peak Min. You know what I mean? And <laughs> yeah. it goes to the Fast and Furious where he stole this show despite having, not having as many lines as Paul Walker's character. You right. know? So I think it's important. And not even being the lead. And not being the lead. So to Although me, they've retconned that. So to they, me, they I look at the Fast is. and Furious Tokyo Drift as kind of like the the benchmark uh, of that, where he had two lines, but he did it so well that we at least ranked it where it is. It's not high, but there's a reasons why it's above Wheelman and Butcher Bay. <laughs> and I think it's, yeah. for me, like, this game, he didn't kill it. He didn't blow, blow me away. But he just did a little better than, definitely did better than Butcher Bay. <laughs> Butcher Bay was lazy as fuck. It sounded like he was... In one day out, or he was in the studio for one day and out. Will man, it sounded like maybe he was there twice. This one, I'm like, he maybe he went there three times except for a couple lines. He rushed, or maybe he just did better in that one day he was there. Yeah, this is his third rodeo too, so he's gonna get better at voice acting a little bit. Yeah, fourth act, fourth time because he was in uh, Iron Giant, but that's kind of hard to. And Dark Fury. Oh, you're right, you're right, you're right. So the, whatever. So compared to those, though, like I, he did better than those. So I, I'm 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 putting it above Wheelman person. Unless you want to, okay, change my mind. No, I, I agree with you. Um, as it's just one of those things where it's like, oh, Wheelman's a much better game <laughs> than this. That I just if he did just better, decide, if he just like, if no. some of the lines were just, I'm with you. I think it was so, more of the, part of the writing issue, though. But I think if so, if there was a little bit more to work with. If you just had a couple more lines better, I would have heard an argument for Above Tokyo Drift just because of uh, a mix of both quality and quantity. 
because he had two great lines, but that's all the lines he had. You know, so I could hear an yeah. argument for Tokyo Drift, but I just think he just didn't do well enough for me to really look at that matchup. He was when he was rolling with me. I remember that line. Yeah. <laughs> Still. Here is our new bottom five. Number 18, The Fast and the Furious Tokyo Drift. 19, Assault on Dark Athena. 20, Wheelman. 21, Escape from Butcher Bay. And 22, Awakenings. I hope that when we have like a top 25, I'm like, I want to make sure Wheelman's still in there, though. Because I, I just like Wheelman. Is it, I'm, or for Vin's ranking, even though it's bad, it's just like this part of me. It's, it's fucking that game. You want to find worse things? Yeah. <laughs> No, I don't, but you know what I mean. Just like in some way, I hope it stays yeah. in there for some weird reason. At least I hope it stays in the movie ranking. I hope it stays in the top uh, 25. We'll see, though. Wheelman? Oh. There's some fast I don't know. And There's a lot. Coming. There's a lot. Yes. Yes. Um, and Guardians of the inc- Galaxy is going to come out and, like, it's just going to be top 10, yeah. I think. So. Yeah. We'll actually be seeing um, the final Riddick thing at the end of this year, <laughs> December. Oh, yeah. Crazy, crazy. But next month, Dece- or September 1st on the Chronicles of Diesel, you will see our episode of Fast Five. This is where the fun begins, Devin. Finally. <laughs> this is where this will be fun. It's also, I want to say this quick. It's kind of disappointing that we ba- like named the show after one of his franchises that we're not really liking. <laughs> <laughs> well, well. But, oh well too late now we're in, we're in it everyone else will call it after fast and furious we got to be a little bit different a little bit more subversive we know we a little bit called it more the about wheel man Diesel. podcast <laughs> fuck yes uh vin's wheel man um no, i think we we've vin we diesel's podcast. so many names review Vin Diesel's podcast would have been a great name that we probably would have gotten in trouble for, but yeah, like definitely misleading because everyone was looking that shit up, being like, "Oh my god, he's doing a podcast? Hell yeah!" <laughs> would have gotten so many more listens. We just put than clips of, from now. his Instagram up there, and we were just react to him. We're like, "Wow, some spray <laughs> like all like TikTok reacts." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! Next month's episode, Fast Five, be there. Follow the show and our proper show, the Sonic Movie Show, a weekly show about movies, games, and Sonic the Hedgehog, at Sonic Movie Show. Such a, <laughs> You're like, smiling. Every, every time different... I think about it, like just on face value hearing that, it's just such a goofy thing. Like I'm so happy that we're doing it because it's so fucking goofy. It just sounds so well. Yeah, movie news, video games. You know, Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> exactly. Oh, and Vin Diesel's in there too. <laughs> sure. Our two loves, Sonic and Vin, at Sonic Movie Show on Twitter. I'm on Twitter at Ethan Absolutely, and Devin is on Twitter at C U R S O N A F U N Cursona Fun. Let us know what you thought about this video game if you played it back in the day, and if you played it for today's episode. I'm sorry. Goodbye. I, was, I can't do the quote because he freaking ruined it. Ruined it. What is it with you? What do you got a death wish or something? That's what it takes. I just want to race. <laughs> Die, remember?